Hello and welcome. In this lecture, we will go through the steps required to set up AWS Identity Access Management, commonly referred to as IAM. First, make sure you are logged in the AWS console and you are looking at the AWS dashboard page with the list of all services. Under the Security and Identity category, click on Identity and Access Management. IAM is AWS central service to manage the security for your account. It allows you to set up users, groups, roles, multi-factor authentication, commonly referred to as MFA, access and password policies, and so on. You will see a number of statuses. The first one, delete your root access key, has got the green checkbox next to it, meaning that Amazon has done this for you. All other statuses show an orange warning sign, meaning that some setup is required to make them green. Although MFA is not required to operate with AWS, I strongly recommend setting it up. If you decide to do so, click on the Activate MFA on your root account drop-down. MFA stands for Multi-Factor Authentication and it represents an additional security layer to protect your account from untrusted access. The way it works is as follows. If you activate MFA, when you log in to the AWS console, Amazon will ask you to enter an auto-generated numeric code in addition to your password. This can either be generated from your phone via a dedicated app or through a hardware token provider. This option is generally used in large organizations. Unless you have access to a hardware token provider, it's likely you will need a mobile app. I use the Google Authenticator app available for both iOS and Android for free. Go ahead and install an MFA provider app on your phone. Pause the video if necessary. If you click the Manage MFA button, you will be asked whether you want to use a virtual MFA device, which is the phone option, or a hardware MFA device. Select a virtual MFA device and follow the instructions. You can also click on the link below the checkboxes to read more about MFA. Once you click on the Next Steps button, a QR code will be presented to you. You can open your MFA application, for example Google Authenticator, and scan the code. Google Authenticator will then recognize the QR code and will start generating numeric codes. These codes expire after a minute or so and are continuously regenerated. Enter the first code in the first Authentication Code text field, wait for a second code to be generated, and enter this code in the second Authentication Code text field. When done, click Activate Virtual MFA. Since this is an account which I've created specifically for this course, I will not be setting up MFA because Amazon allows you to use a phone-generated MFA code only for one account, and I'm already using MFA for my production AWS account. However, if this is your first account or if you haven't set up MFA for one of your existing accounts, I strongly recommend activating it. You don't want anyone other than you to access your account. There are hackers out there who are ready to use your account for all sorts of purposes, from coining bitcoins to start their own servers and use them as proxies for all sorts of activities and so on. If this happens, the bill at the end of the month will be very expensive. Once you complete this step and go back to the IAM dashboard, the checkbox should be green. Next, you got the option to set up a user. This is also a strongly recommended option. The credentials you used to create the AWS account in the previous lecture are known as the root account, which can do anything on AWS. The idea with this step is to create users with limited access. If you do so, even if someone was able to gain access to the user's account, the damage they could do is limited. For instance, we can create a DevOps body user. To do this, from the IAM dashboard, click on the Create Individual IAM Users dropdown, and then on the Manage Users button. Once you choose this option, click on the Create New Users button, and then enter DevOps body in the first text field. When done, Click the Create button at the bottom right of your screen. If you want to access the AWS console with these user's credentials, you will need to specify a password. We will not need this functionality for this course because we will be using the AWS Java SDK to interact with Amazon Web Services. However, if you want to set up a password, from the Users menu you can select the user and from the Users Actions drop-down button you can select Manage Password. Now, please listen carefully to what I am about to say. 
Amazon will give you the option to view and download the user's credentials only once. If you miss this chance, you will need either to delete the user and recreate it or to regenerate its access keys. Click on the Download Credentials button at the bottom right of your screen. A credentials.csv file will download to your PC. Save this file to a secure location and don't share it with anyone. If you open the .csv file, you will notice three fields. The username, in our case DevOps Buddy, the access key ID and the secret access key. Interactions with AWS through an API or the AWS command line tool require the provisioning of this information. We will see later on in this course how to set up the AWS command line utility and also how to use these credentials when using the AWS Java SDK. For now, you can close the file. Remember to store it in a secure place and not to share it with anyone. Of course, I've deleted this user since I put together this presentation, and then I created a new one, so the credentials in the file shown are no longer valid. Next, we will set up a group. Groups allows us to set a series of permissions specific to AWS services. For instance, we might want to create a group developers which has only got access to S3 and EC2 services. Click the Manage Groups button and then create new group. Let's call this group developers. If you click Next Steps, you will be presented with a set of security policies. In the Filter Search field, type EC2 and select Amazon EC2 Full Access. Then, search for S3 and select Amazon S3 Full Access. Feel free to go ahead and read some of the other policies. You will notice that they are quite detailed. Amazon offers also a Power User Access Security Policy, which provides access to all services except from IAM. This is the level just below the root account. To complete the group creation, click Next Steps. A review screen will appear with a confirmation of the group details. These are stored in an Amazon resource name, normally referred to as ARN. Finally, click on the Create Group button. Now, select the Developers group and from the group action, select Add Users to Group. Then select DevOps Buddy and click the Add Users button. Finally, you can apply an IAM password policy for your users. From the IAM dashboard, select the drop down for Apply an IAM password policy status and choose Manage password policy. Here, you can specify all sorts of options, such as the password length whether it requires upper and lower cases, numbers, whether the password should expire, and so on. Go ahead and define your password policy. I will choose a password policy which is minimum 8 characters long, it has a mixture of lower and upper case characters as well as digits in it. When done, click the Apply Password Policy button. At this point, all checkboxes should be green, with the exception of MFA if you haven't opted for it. Congratulations! In this lecture, you have set up the Identity Access Management for your account. In doing so, you have learned how to set up multi-factor authentication, you have created a user and a group, you have selected the services that the group has access to, you have associated a user with the group, and finally, you have defined an IAM password policy for your account. I hope you found this lecture useful. Thank you for your time, and I see you in the next lecture.